Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 18th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well earthquakes and volcanoes and world weather. So always starting out here looking at our sun for the past 48 hours, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. A couple C-class solar flares to talk about, and as well, and very small M-class solar flare the last 24 hours since last night's update having a look at the last 24 or 48 hours incoming lots of activity on the back side of the sun as you can see all that plasma shooting around and as well a pretty active sunspot firing away on the right hand side having a look at outgoing we did have a couple CMEs from cresting a sunspots Another plasma filament lifting there in the last few images, outgoing. Having a look at multi-spectrum, at the most notable events, the past two days, very active sunspot region there, and as well a large plasma tornado. We also have a building, a coronal hole, equatorial region, now becoming earth-facing with a small coronal hole in the southern hemisphere. Now let's have a closer look here at that plasma tornado I was talking about. Big filaments stretching across the surface and dancing around. You can see multiple of them in the northern hemisphere right now. Amazing images here. We're going to have to hope and pray that that filament stays intact and that these very active sunspots that are turning around get out all their energy before they're earth-facing. Having a look at 171 angstroms here, we only have two sunspots. One is outgoing, and the other is turning in in the southern hemisphere, and as well another one in the northern hemisphere, but this one is turning in now. And as well visible here at another light, you can see our sunspot regions. There is that newly forming sunspot southern hemisphere and as well you can see a lot of energy coming from the top left cresting in space weather conditions currently we are under r1 minor radio blackout from the m-class solar flare and as well 296 kilometers per second our solar winds are coming in at solar x-ray flux showing m-class and as well well looks like another m-class and a strong c-class so three solar flares not in tracing direction but we did have a minor radio blackout instantly, so that could be from the incoming space weather. Who knows? As you can see, Space Weather Prediction Center is showing space weather coming in 19th into the 20th of November. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral showing a double CME taking off towards the Parker Solar Probe. Another double shot CME. The one we were posting yesterday went southward, but in an earth-facing direction, so we'll see if this space weather comes. Having a look here, Lasco 2, showing the last two days of space weather activity. Big CME from the southern hemisphere there. But then watch all this incoming activity from the cresting bright region, northern hemisphere, and as well the newly sunspot which will be at north facing direction. Closer look here at all this activity coming from the left hand side there. Massive amounts of plasma and protons accelerated into the abyss. Now let's get to earthquakes here the last 24 hours as we are very low 160 earthquakes less than 160 according to USGS. 5.5 magnitude earthquake Papua New Guinea being the largest and here 616 kilometer depth earthquake 4.7 Vanuatu and that's the deepest the past few days so very interesting and stay aware and prepared heads up throughout the west ring of fire and southwest ring of fire notable 4.9 there east of Krakatoa Palu Indonesia west of the Banda Sea. New activity here, Kuril Islands 4.6 just recently. 
in his well-notable activity Kamchatka and eastward through the Rat Islands and Alaska. 4.0 westward and 4.2 eastward. Across North America, not much to talk about. No major swarms. No notable earthquakes across New Madrid. But we do have minor activity building through Yellowstone and as well as Pacific Northwest. USGS reporting 153 earthquakes. That's very low. Very low. Our average is right around 200. So something's up. Something's coming. Notable, as I said, minor activity here. Uh, Amboy, Washington. That is the top. Mount St. Helens. And as well, west of Rainier there. But yesterday, there were a couple minor earthquakes right atop of those volcanoes. Always a little bit worrisome when you get earthquakes in the crater of a volcano. As well, notable earthquake here, Los Angeles, Mexico, reporting a 4.4, 114-kilometer depth. Dominican Republic reporting a 4.0 and as well a 4.5 here. Tina, Ecuador, lots of activity northeastward with the volcanoes. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Not much to talk about through Iceland. No major earthquakes reported. Still minor seismicity continues through the region. But as I've said in the last couple of days, I do believe Mount Etna, who had a pretty large eruption the other day, may have relieved a lot of the pressure that Iceland was under. Having a look here at the last seven days for earthquakes around the world, 616 kilometer depth today, that is, the deepest earthquake the past seven days. Quick look here, southern hemisphere versus the northern. Much love and thank you so much for watching tonight. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section where you're watching from and if you enjoy the content. Heads up, be ready, North American Plate in Central America. Having a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well, most recent volcanoes getting updated. Sabancaya in Peru, Semeru in Indonesia, Popo in Mexico, Ibu in Indonesia, Fuego, Guatemala, Reventador in Ecuador. As well, lots of flood alerts across Africa right now. Dakono in Indonesia. Landslides, wildfires, Mayan in the Philippines, and as well as Sangay in Ecuador. That's all in the last 11 hours. Stay tuned. As far as I know, there are 36. There could be more active and erupting volcanoes around the world. Stay tuned tomorrow. Two pretty big systems here roaring off the coast of North and South America right now. Atlantic gaining some velocity and strength with these systems. Overlooking the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Pretty big, vigorous system heading across Japan right now. And as well, a low pressure center seems to be locked and loaded over the Australian continent. And watch for that to continue to bring moisture through. Possible typhoon development. Central West Pacific there. But big high pressure ridge coming off of China may stop that overlooking Africa and North Atlantic big low affecting you this week and as well lots of daily evaporation rains through Africa and a big system heading across the Black Sea and it looks like a lot of the moisture is saying south Ukraine now let's have a look at the air quality report brought to you by VAR, our volcanoes erupting and or active. As you can see, big plumes coming off of Mexico and as well Kamchatka and Colombia from Reventador. And then overlooking Southeast Asia, Europe, and Africa. As you can see, big plume coming off of Italy from Mount Etna. Big plumes are coming through Central Africa from near Marigira. Now let's get to weather here as we've got that big low roaring up the east coast. Expected landfall tonight through Nova Scotia. Long range forecast showing here. Big system going into Alaska still and as well a pretty vigorous low here 
coming from the north that's going to bring a lot of snow to most of eastern Canada and as well central Pacific Northwest United States. Pretty big vigorous systems here in the long range forecast gaining strength heading into the Atlantic towards Iceland. But we will see some accumulations with this snow especially through Ontario with lake effect snow. Stay tuned for more details as the forecasts come in. Overlooking South America, you've got a low pressure center over Paraguay right now, and it does not look like it's going to be going anywhere. For days upon days, it will continue to bring some extreme weather, heavy downpours, Long range forecast does not look like it's going to change much. Overlooking Europe, Africa, still got that grinding low through the Mediterranean. Heading into the Black Sea, we've also got an interesting low pressure center here, East Atlantic. Stuck between two high pressure ridges, probably be blown out of the water. Daily evaporation rains through Central Africa. West Africa could see some very heavy amounts. Overlooking Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia. No major typhoons or cyclones developing. Low pressure center affecting New Zealand. And another one coming in for the 22nd for the southern parts. And that grinding low across eastern and southeastern Australia. At the same time, another low moves into New Zealand. Possible cyclone developing there, west of Myanmar, heading towards India. Then overlooking the North Pacific, we've still got some pretty big windy and snowy low-pressure centers here heading towards northern BC and Alaska. Woke up to... Below freezing temperatures this morning, minus 5 in Ontario. These cold temperatures and snow will be sweeping across the nation. Across the whole nation of North America. But mostly Canada here as they will see probably 25 to 45 centimeters of snow. Parts of these regions here through northern BC and Alaska could see upwards of 250 to 300 centimeters of snow over the next 10 days. This is the next 10-day snow forecast brought to you by Windy.com. Thank you all for watching and inviting me into your living room today or wherever you are watching from. Thanks for watching. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.